Hi everyone, Igor from Vinus Reverie, and you know, it's the, the funnest part uh, I think of the day, it's when we get new shipment and it's uh, time to open up uh, uh, these wines. So today is uh, October 31st, uh, Halloween, so you know, we hope that these wines are going to be you know, scary good. Pardon the corny humor. Uh, so anyway, uh, we're going to start out with some sparkling wines. Uh, we have two wines from Lucien Albrecht from uh, uh, Alsace. So this is Cremant d'Alsace. Uh, one of them is a, a, a Brut, the other one is a Rosé. So Rosé is made 100% Pinot Noir and the Brut is a, you know, a Pinot Blanc blend. Uh, uh, you know, two grapes that are allowed to grow in Alsace. Uh, maybe familiar wines, you kind of see them in re retail sometimes, but you know, I bring them in because I think they're good values. Uh, both 90 point wine that you can retail at around $20 which is a great price point for a sparkling wine. Um, so, what we got? Alright, so this is the Brut. Um, they kind of look similar. The Rosé obviously is going to have a uh, pink color. Yeah, I don't know if you can tell that. Yeah, so it's pink, uh, you know, for the Pinot Noir grape, 100% Pinot Noir. Uh, and the third sparkling wine is from Limou. Uh, so Limou, it, it's a uh, sub-region in the Languedoc, bigger region area. Um, great value sparkling wines. Uh, they're made with a Chardonnay and a Pinot with a little bit of Chenin Blanc. Uh, one of the things that Limou are kind of, you know, proud of, uh, um, claiming to have discovered, is that they, uh, they say that they discovered sparkling wine before Dom Perignon. Obviously, you know, the, the, the famous uh, Champagne Dom Perignon. Uh, so, you know, uh, they said it's from 1600s. Uh, well, you know, we'll believe them. All right, so these are the sparklers. Next, we're gonna stay in Languedoc and actually go to one of our favorite producers in Languedoc. Uh, this is Domaine Lafage. I personally like it. On our uh, walls, we, we claim that it's the best value producer in the world. Most of their wines retail below $20 and they get high scores, 92 and 93. We have a 94 point wine that we retail for $16. So uh, they specialize in Rome varietals, uh, both uh, their red wines and their white wines. Uh, and we got uh, several of them here. So. The first one we got, it's Old Vines Carignan. Very unusual to see this grape, 100% uh, varietal because it's not a typically a very complex wine. But when you got the, the right soils and it comes from old vines, usually 80 years plus, uh, they make very interesting wines. All right. Next one is the... Um, white wine uh, from uh, Domaine Lafage and this is a blend of like seven grapes there's Grenache Blanc, Roussan, Vermentino, Sauvignon Blanc, several other varietals uh, you know very nice wine great sipper you know don't let the pretty bottle fool you there's actually substance to, to this wine all right, okay. right. Domaine Lafage, the Nicolas Cuvée a similar uh, idea as with Carignan, 100% uh, Grenache Blanc, which is very unusual because uh, typically by itself it doesn't make uh, complex wines, but this comes from 80 year old vines, old vines, interesting wine. Uh, and finally, the last uh, Lafage wine we have is uh, Bastide Miraflores Cuvée. Uh, so this is the wine I was telling you that got 94 points. Uh, and it's 80% Syrah, 20% uh, Grenache. So this is uh, probably the most full-bodied wines in the lineup that we have uh, today. Right. Let's move Lafage out of the way. Next we have a 
Pinot Noir from the Falls region in Germany. Uh, really nice Pinot. Uh, the region is really uh, known mo more for uh, Rieslings, obviously. Uh, they make 5 to 6% of their uh, total plant, plant, plantation of grapes is to Pinot. And for $20, uh, this is a great uh, drinking Pinot, like everyday Pinot. Next one we have a, a New Zealand uh, P, uh, Sauvignon Blanc. Uh, so this is, uh, it's called Nobody's Hero. It's actually the second label of Framingham, which is a really nice producer. Uh, they make um, you know, Sauvignon Blanc, Pinot Noir, Riesling, Pinot Gris, a lot of cool climate wines that, uh, you know, uh, where New Zealand is, it has great conditions to grow those wines. Um, and it's hard to find many of their wines in the United States. As far as I know, very little gets into the U.S. I wish more of it got into it. I've read great things about them, uh, but at least there's something you know, Blanc, you know, nobody's hero gets in. I tried it. It's great wine, you know, decided to bring it in. So, you know, I, I would rec definitely recommend you try it too. Okay. All right. Now we're going to Italy. And, you know, I'm excited about a lot of the wines, you know, I'm always excited about Domaine Lafage, uh, but I'm really excited about these wines. So, here we have a, a Brunello from Aieta. It's a small winery in Tuscany, in, in the Brunello region. Uh, I just have to come across them, you know, just reading a lot of, you know, magazines and just articles. It's a wine that nobody on the West Coast has. It has a, a very little... Uh, East Coast distribution, so I got their Brunello and also I got their Rosso Montecino, which is a you know, They call it a baby uh, Brunello because uh, they don't age as long as Brunello's uh, and uh, um, It doesn't come from the prime grapes, uh, but they don't also don't cost as much as Brunello's, but you know great wines So, you know, we were looking at, uh, at Brunello Let me pull up the Rosso Like I said, so that was a Brunello 2014, and this is a 2017 uh, uh, Rosso. Um, you know, if you don't want to spend eighty dollars on the Brunello, this is a great wine below thirty dollars. All right. Now let's go to back to France. All right, here we have from Domaine Giraud, uh, a white Chateau of the Pop. Uh, so uh, they grow about 6% of total plantings in the Rhone Valley is dedicated to white wines. And you know, Chateau of the Pop is the most famous village uh, in uh, uh, Southern Rhone. And it, usually they, they have the most expensive wines. Uh, so because there's such little production of white Chateau of the Pop, usually the prices are astro astronomical. We actually uh, will be able to sell this below fifty dollars, uh, which is uh, a great value if you kind of relatively spe speaking. Most of the white of the pops go you know sixty dollars and above, and you know on top of that this got ninety four points from Wine Spectator, so it's a great score. Uh, so you know I, I would classify it as a value. Uh, this is from Spain. So this producer uh, is from Priorat. It's very famous for their Grenache wines. You know, similar to Languedoc, similar to uh, uh, Rhone Valley. You know, Chateau de Pau that we just talked about. But this is actually their uh, white wine. It's made from Grenache Blanc and Macabeo. Uh, they're a very famous producer, kind of similar. Uh, producer to some Chateau of the Pop producers. The wines mostly are very expensive, but this is kind of their entry level wine, and, and I think uh, you know, I think it's a great wine to try uh, to kind of get an idea of what their more premium wines might taste like. All right, All right. right here we have. 
Dobain uh, Disiben uh, from uh, Languedoc. And um, Langu Languedoc, you know, Lafage is from Languedoc, uh, Lemu was from Languedoc. Languedoc is the biggest producing uh, wine region in the world. About 5% of total wine uh, is produced in that region. Uh, you know, most of the wines are made in bulk. And, and, you know, I'll give you an example. A lot of these, you know, wine clubs, you know, like Wall Street Journal's wine club, when they say, oh, you get a great deal, uh, it's, you know, $120 value or, uh, you know, $200 value, and you get these wines for like 80 bucks, a dozen of great wines. Most of them come from inferior wines uh, from the Languedoc. Uh, they're not great values. However, uh, it's kind of, you know, a treasure trove. If you know the producers who know the ideal site and know what they're doing, it's actually the best uh, value wines in the whole world. I'm saying, you know, Lafage, I think, makes the, uh, the best uh, wine, uh, uh, you know, value wine in the world. The same thing with these guys. They're a little more expensive. They're like in the low 20s. But once again, you know, high scores, typically in the 90s. Think, uh, you know, great values. All right. All right, so this is Bodega Maranones uh, from Madrid. We were just talking about Priorat, how they specialize in Grenache-based wines. But actually, uh, uh, these guys, Bodega Maranones, and there's a couple other uh, ones, Commando G, uh, Danny Landy. It's, it's a group of friends who are kind of pioneering winemakers in the, that they're making uh, Grenache, not in a full body style, which is what it's typically made in, like in Priorat, like in Chardonnay of the Pop, but like lighter Pinot-esque Grenaches. Uh, they've been written up a lot of times. At first, I read about them from Jesse's Robinson, you know, where I get a lot of my information from. Uh, but even, you know, in the past year, New York Times have, have hyped them up. Uh, I've carried wines from, you know, Daniel Landy from Commando G. So this is, you know, uh, a Grenache, you know, to try. Once again, a $20 Grenache. I think it's a spectacular value. I think we have one more. All right, guys, this is also from uh, uh, Spain, uh, Casilla y Leon region. It's kind of north central Spain, the biggest wine region in, uh, in Spain. Um, in a sense, uh, similar to Languedoc, a lot of bulk wine is there, a, a lot of mass produced wines, but these guys. Uh, Makina y Tabla, uh, you know, they're made, this is a Verdero uh, 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 wine, so white wine, uh, great wine, and actually an uh, interesting side story behind this, when I first opened up the store, I talked to the um, importer who brings in these wines, uh, and the importer is based uh, on the East Coast, but they have, you know, representation on the West Coast, so not their whole portfolio is in the West Coast. So I asked them about, hey guys, are you gonna have these wines uh, on the West Coast? Uh, and they were like, nah, well, we need to see if there's interest. Uh, so, you know, a long story short, you know, a year later, I guess there was enough interest, maybe just for me, because I don't see anybody else on the West Coast carrying these wines. So when I saw that they had them on, the, on their West Coast catalog, I jumped on it. So excited about this wine. Like I said, one of those, pioneering producers that make great wines right now and I think it's a great time to buy them before their reputation expands because you know when reputation expands uh, the price of wine does not go down it goes up so you know I hope you guys uh, enjoy the little introduction and you know where to find these wines it's uh, here at Vinus Reverie all right guys I'll talk to you next time thank you